G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. I'm really excited about today's video. I've teamed up with Nigel McHugh from the Republic of Ireland and Luke Gibson from America, who's got his own channel, which is down below. Please uh, have a look in the comments section and subscribe to Luke's channel. He does some fantastic stuff over in the States. And we've got together today to talk about what is the ideal set of equipment that you need for all your basic fencing activities. So if you are just starting out or if you're a professional, I think today's video will have something in it. Because what I've found through this video series is that we do something slightly different in every country. And I'm really excited about this collaboration. So um, I'm going to start it off, then we'll throw over to Nigel in Ireland, and then we'll finish off with Luke over in the United States to talk about what they reckon goes into your basic fencing kit in each of these three countries, on each of these three continents. I hope today has something really good for you in it, and if you like this video and you want more from this channel, please do support it. It doesn't cost a cent, you just press that red button down there that says subscribe, hit the little bell notification, and you'll find out about all the new videos that we put up on the channel. So, we've obviously got our fencing bar to dig holes, and we've got a fence post shovel. That's pretty obvious, it doesn't obviously go in the bucket, but I thought it was worth pointing out that you don't have to have a million dollars and incredible amounts of gear to get started with fencing. Really all you've got to do is be able to dig a hole about 600 mil or two feet deep. All right, so let's start filling the bucket with the gear that I reckon you should get if you're starting to fence in Australia. First thing that goes in my bucket is a cordless drill. Why? Well, I've got a nifty little pipe here that I put together the other day. It's got an end cap glued on one end and it's got a screw cap glued on the other. And inside this pipe, I have a reasonably expensive and easily damaged auger bit. Now this auger bit is really useful for putting hanging kits for gates into posts, for putting pins through posts, pinning box end assemblies, all that sort of thing. So those two items, I reckon, are really important to get started in fencing, or you're not going to build your end assemblies properly. The next thing you're going to need is a good set of fencing pliers. You can buy fencing pliers for 10 bucks. They'll usually break, you won't be able to do your knots properly, and you'll be really frustrated and you think you don't have any skills. Sometimes the more you spend on a product, the better. If you're going to be sticking around with fencing for a few years, I really suggest something like these. These are from Morn in England. Um, and you can see that they've got quite a few leverages going on. They're nearly as powerful as a pair of bolt cutters, but they fit in your pocket. Um, another advantage of these is that they have a groove cut into the lower jaw so that you can actually use them as wire twitches as well. Um, they're just, they're indispensable. I just love these things. But the only thing they won't do is pull out a staple, but that's where your claw hammer comes in. What goes in must come out. Remember, only drive your staples two thirds of the way in. Next goes into my bucket, obviously, is a good set of strainers. Now, in Australia, pretty much the standard um, is your Hayes 108 or Strain Right strain strainers. I've got two sets because when I put up sheep or goat mesh fencing, I actually strain two strands at the same time to keep the fence nice and straight so I don't end up with crooked straining. So I've got two sets of strainers because I use sheep netting. Next thing that goes into my bag is a good tool belt. On the left side, on the left pocket, because I'm a right-hander, in the left pocket, I've got some barbed staples. And on the right pocket, I always carry a set of netting clips and netting clip pliers. That means that I don't have to carry around a heavy bucket when I'm walking up and down the fence nailing in the staples. So that goes into my bucket. Next into my bucket, sometimes I need this, but in a later video I'm going to show you a really cool hack for setting the heights of all your staples in every fence post. I certainly don't use a tape measure on every fence post I drive. Next that goes into my bucket, along the tradition of what goes in must come out, um, is a star picket puller. I have a video on how to make this and use it, um, really useful tool. Next, I have a set of gloves. I tend to only use these when I'm working with barbed wire. Um, the rest of the time, I actually find it safer. 
um, and a lot more and a lot easier to work with wire if you're actually just using your normal hands. But some people might want to use gloves more often than that. And as has been suggested to me in the past, I really should be encouraging people to use safety glasses when they're fencing and working with wire. All right, let's have a chat to uh, Luke and Nigel and find out what, what is in their kit. Well guys, I'm farming here in County Cavan in Ireland. Cavan is uh, an area of drumlands which are small hills formed by glaciation in the last ice age. So you got lots of little hills. They said they resemble, from far, far they resemble a basket full of eggs, that is the type of it. So you would have mainly fields, five acres, three acres, ten acres is a large field around here. Typical contents of an Irish farmer's fencing bucket. I have a pair 18 inch old croppers, great for undoing old bits of wire, snipping steeples that are driven in too far and you can't get them out any other way. This is a pair of Chinese copied Hayes, co Hayes copies wire strainers. What they have got on the chain end is a little hook comes standard now seemingly so you can put around a post strain that way. The letter chain I have belong to a pulley block or something. The pitch is the same as the haze water chain, so it gives you a lot of extra length to reach perhaps a little bit further to a secure anchor point. My haze strainers, they are about 25 years of age. The original chain has got a bit of abuse, as you can see, mainly from using them in such a fashion around a post or a small tree. They're not designed to be pulled in that manner, but they're still good, good strainers. Flat hammer, fiberglass shaft, it lasts a lot longer than the timber ones. A pair of fencing pliers, you can pay 30 euro. Well, CK ones, they're Draper, I think they're about 15 euro, and you get other knockoff copies down to 10 euro. What happens to them all is either this jaw or this jaw eventually breaks off, in my experience. A pair of gloves, a pair of pliers, and after that, we're down to gripples and staples. Gripples seem to come standard with the roll of wire. You get one on each end, one on each strand of wire. So you get eight gripples with every roll of wire, sheep wire. Other than that, you probably wouldn't bother buying them. Just make a loop and make an ordinary joint to join the wire. They're handy on hedges where you're putting wire in on a hedge and the hedge is uneven, up and down, and you have no way around, way around it. You've got to go up or down and you can put an angle in the wire using a gripple. Staples, you buy them in 5kg buckets. They come now with a barb on them, which is, I suppose is supposed to help them stay on the post. A lot of posts that you buy are very poor quality. They're just soft wood from tenons. They're not dried properly. They're supposed to be tantalized, uh, but it's just a quick dip as far as I can see and because they're not dried it doesn't absorb it and five years time they've all rotted at ground level and if you push an animal pushes up against them they'll break off. That's it, that's about the typical contents of an Irish farmer's bucket, fencing bucket. You can see no expense spared, five gallon drum, hard to keep a hold of everything. You leave a pair of pliers down and somehow they vanish mysteriously own accord. So I hope that's been some interest to you guys and uh, big thumbs up to Tim for his very interesting channel. Hi Tim, Luke Gibson here with Farm Fence Solutions. I'm a fence contractor from the United States and we also have a material sales uh, side of our fencing business. 
uh, with a focus on uh, tornado wire and uh, setting up the dealer network here in the United States for them. Uh, behind me you can see uh, what would be a typical fence job for us. Uh, this is a horse net on galvanized pipe which is primarily what we use. I'll give you a rundown of what we keep in the fence truck. I don't think we can fit it all in a bucket, uh, but I'll do my best to give you give you the basics here. For a beginning fencer, of course, a good set of double shovels would be important. I prefer to keep mine uh, rusty and unused, if at all possible. Of course, a good spud bar if you get into the rock. Again, I prefer to have one that's rusty and not used very often. Uh, fence and spade, which we use quite a bit. One step up from the double shovels would be a dry wall, which no one likes. Uh, this one in particular weighs about 110 pounds. We keep it around for emergencies, but it has got to be an emergency to get this out. One step better than the dry wall is a gas-powered vibratory driver which we'll use for pipe up to four inch in diameter. You can see behind me the big post driver. Uh, that's what we typically use. Uh, we've got a, another one that's, that's quite a bit smaller. I actually prefer it. Uh, Protec Evo 1. It's on a different fence job. So anyway, uh, Nigel gets to see a little piece of the homeland there. That's an Irish made uh, driver on a, uh, we outfit that onto a, it's a Japanese track dumper made by Yanmar several years ago and it's served us well. On to the small bits uh, that are in the bucket. Uh, tape measure, of course, you know, for pulling layout on your post or uh, hanging a gate, uh, marking for braces, uh, cutting your brace post, whatnot. Uh, it's important to have a level, of course. Uh, we carry a small level on the post driver, and it's also got one. The other driver has an auto level function, so you just push a button. Uh, so this isn't particularly to keep post level. This is more to hang gates with. Uh, a headlight has been pretty important this year. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it has been pretty hot and humid here. Uh, nice to be able to work in the dark a little bit. Uh, I don't enjoy the peace and quiet too much, so I keep a Bluetooth speaker on the post driver. Give me something to kill the time. As far as fence pliers go, uh, we don't do much on wood post anymore, but when we do, it's handy to have an old set of fence pliers. Uh, these are made by Crescent. We've got several sets of them. They don't break. They've served us well. Uh, pretty good tools to have. But as far as dealing with, with uh, high tensile net wire, which is primarily what we do, uh, Knipex mini bolt cutters and combination pliers. Uh, a standard smooth wire high tensile plier doesn't work for us because we have to cut the knots out uh, on, a, on a fixed knot fence or a square knot fence. We don't build any hinge joint. Uh, but with 95% of our work being net wire fence that's either fixed knot or square knot, we need to be able to get in there tight. These are probably 10 years old and still do a great job. Of course, we stock these uh, farm fence solutions, uh, so those are in stock all the time. A pair of gloves is nice to have. These uh, We order these from Plain Jans, and uh, the reason that I like them, they're a little bit expensive, but you can tie wire in the rain. Uh, I don't particularly wear gloves very often, but in the snow and the rain, when the wire gets slick, these get a hold pretty good, so I like them. Uh, I keep two hammers. Uh, one kind of heavy heavy hammer for knocking in wedges on, a, on a, a stretcher board, and then a lighter hammer for driving staples, uh, which we don't particularly drive staples that often anymore. We keep a stockade staple gun in the truck uh, just for the wood post jobs, which we don't do very often, but uh, saves a lot of time. And it's good to have uh, for a contractor, not too practical for a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, but anyway, we keep one of those around. Uh, uh, gripple tool, gripple contractor tool. Uh, the gripples don't do you much good if you don't have this. Uh, there's a medium gripple. You can actually tension your wire uh, with the gripple. Uh, smooth wire or even net wire on, on short stretches. Uh, we do it fairly often. Uh, it's, it's a good tool to have. Uh, those as well as the uh, T-clip the gripples, uh, especially for no-climb, uh, tight spacing wire 
it's nice to be able to tie your wire off with those instead of a, a knot. In my tool belt, uh, we have a big problem with ticks around here, ticks and chiggers, so some uh, good bug spray. Uh, lots of trash in there, gripples, uh, earplugs, uh, around the post driver, anything loud. Hearing protection is fairly important, but you're on your own there. Uh, utility knife is convenient to have. I don't wear a tool belt very often. It's usually just strapped to the pallet forks on the skid steer. Of course, a good chain strainer. I prefer a strain right. We also stock these. Um, Hayes makes a good one too, uh, but I prefer the strain right. They just seem to last longer on the high tensile wire. Uh, with a hook on the end where you can pull to a post. We also use boundary strainers uh, that go along with a net board. Uh, I prefer a gut strain, so two, two sets of net boards uh, and then boundary strainers in the middle. Of course these are similar to the chain strainers, just a longer chain. I won't show you that, it's just a chain with a hook on the end. Wire dogs for a long stretch of barbed wire. It's nice to be able to pull uh, that and uh, if you're pulling around a corner with net wire it's good to, to use extra boundary strainers or chain strainers to kind of help that wire around the corner. This is an old probably Chinese set of uh, boundary strainers. A broken chain but with just the, the hooks on the ends it's handy especially with a pipe post. Uh, if we're at the crest of a hill to pull to pull the net wire up to, to uh, get it tied to the post, it's handy to be able to pull that up uh, with a mechanical device instead of trying to hold it while you tie it off. So we keep a couple old sets of these around just for that. Uh, of course some good adjustable wrenches uh, for any repairs you need to make, but mainly uh, for gate hanging is what we keep these on board for. We keep uh, a normal cordless drill. Uh, we use these for a post clip on our uh, on our pipe post. That post clip just goes around, and then obviously you can spin it down tight with the with the chuck on here. We also keep a cordless impact driver on the trucks, uh, just for uh, self-tapping screws to put insulators on pipe posts. Of course, something that's in our kit that's not in in most kits around the, the world is a slag hammer to clean off our welds. Welding gloves, a welding hood, respirator, uh, obviously welding galvanized is fairly dangerous and bad for your lungs so we try to try to protect ourselves. And of course there's a welder here in the truck that you can't see uh, but that's pretty well a rundown of what we keep in the rig. Uh, for a fence job. Uh, of course that varies whether we're on a wood post or a pipe post job or a smooth wire, barbed wire, net wire. Like I said most of our work is with net wire. Uh, so anyhow that's how we get it done and hopefully that's helpful. Please comment away, let us know what you think. Cheers guys.